Our final topic in fisheries economics, so chapter 15, is going to be property rights regimes. And this is related to box 15.3 in your textbook, so property rights regimes. The first type of property right regime is state property, so this is owned by the government. And as I wrote here, state property is not always well managed. It depends on how well the government is run. Sometimes it is well managed, sometimes it's poorly managed. The next topic is private property, which we've talked about a lot. So private property means uh, a single firm owns everything. Um, this is rare in ocean fisheries, although actually we talked about lobster fishing in off the coast of New England being very difficult because it's open access. But lobster fishing off the coast of Maryland is actually not open access. They've managed to define private property over lobsters in the ocean. So a fisherman owns a certain number of acres of the ocean floor, owns all the lobsters there. Now they don't build fences. The, the lobsters could wander away to other areas, but lobsters are fairly slow moving and and so this isn't a big problem. I guess people think that yes you lose some lobsters but you also gain some lobsters from your neighbors and so that probably evens out. Um, so unsurprisingly uh, the condition of the lobster industry is a lot better off the coast of Maryland because you have private property. Now I wrote here private property is impractical for some resources such as the air we breathe. So you, you can't always turn things into private property, but, but when you can, then you do avoid open access problems. Uh, we'll get to open access in a moment. The next topic here is common property. Now, the tragedy of the commons uses the word commons, as in common property, but as I said, that's actually an incorrect title for that work. That work should have been titled The the, uh, the Tragedy of Open Access because common property means traditional, often pre-capitalistic regulation. So for instance, irrigation uh, water in, I believe it's Indonesia, was regulated for hundreds of years before the capitalist era by local priests. So this is so common property means the the resource is owned in common by the community and it's regulated by the community. Now I wrote here that can be threatened by the rise of capitalism. Capitalism tends to transform traditional ownership. Often communal property is trans or common property is transformed into private property, uh, and that that can generate externalities where there were no externalities before. Because in co with common property, um, there were no externalities because the entire community owned absolutely everything, and so any potential externalities were internalized. But when when capitalism begins, said uh, common property often. Uh, 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 often dissipates, often changes to, to private property. In terms of how well does common property work, uh, there are situations where common property fails, but there are also situations where common property has worked, common property management regulation has worked successfully for centuries, many centuries. So sometimes it can be quite successful. And finally, we have open access, which we've talked about a lot. Open access is not like common property. Because with common property, you have an owner, it's the community, and you have regulation and rules. With open access, you don't have any owner. You don't have any regulation or any rules. With open access, literally, it's a free-for-all, like the so-called Wild West. And we've seen in this chapter that when you have open access, you have 
externalities and other kind of problems. Um, we haven't really talked about externalities much in this chapter, but for instance, if you catch, if you're, if you're in open access and you catch a fish, that means that the other fishermen can't catch that fish. So there's an external effect there. So one way of thinking about the difference in property rights is using the language of externalities. Although usually when we're talking about natural resource economics, we don't use the language of externalities. Instead, we use this property rights. Uh, language, um, different kinds of property rights. So open access tends to be a property right regime that ends up with the resource being overexploited. This finishes chapter 15, which is one of our uh, longest and most difficult chapters. <laughs>